So making special requests, we first offer the entire universe, regarding it as the pure land of Buddha, to Guru Sumati, Buddha Haruka, and all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. This practice is called a mandala offering. So again, we can improve our understanding of what we're doing mentally when we offer a pure land to our spiritual guide. What's happening? So we have to imagine a pure land filled with pure beings, pure enjoyments, and offer that imagined pure land, pure beings to Guru Samadhi Buddha Haruka. So there are many ways of uh, offering the mandala at more and, prof more and more profound levels. And Geshe says, you can read more, learn more from the mandala offering section of Guide to Dakini Land. So within our spiritual training, and particularly within Tantra, trainings of Tantra, the Tantric teachings, imagination is of immense importance. Immense. And energy will come for imagining purely, imputing purely, creating purely, through our understanding that everything is mere appearance, everything is mentally created, everything is the nature of the mind, and the mind is the nature of emptiness. Upon that basis, we get some feeling for the power of our mind to create reality. Therefore, when we imagine, and we imagine purity, That imagination has power. That, Geshe says, wisdom of imagination, that's beautiful. That actually tells us that we're following the truth. When we use our wisdom of imagination, we're following truth. So we think, oh, this is the truth. This is not the truth. This is not the truth. All the things that we normally see are not the truth. So we think imagination's imagination and the truth's the truth. But the truth is everything's imagined. And what we think of as the truth, inherently existent things, that everything exists outside the mind perceiving it, is completely not true. So then when we imagine, we have these ideas like, well, it's just imagination. That's not real. It's just imagination. Because we think reality is inherent existence. That there are no inherently existent objects. And following the truth of emptiness, we use our wisdom of imagination to create pure objects, pure body, pure mind, pure world. So here in the mandala offering, we're mentally imagining a pure world, a pure universe, vast offering to our spiritual guide. When we're imagining pure things, we're purifying our mind. So what would happen if you made a mandala offering every day? And sometimes we think, you know, uh, Geshe has said, 
We need, if we wish to gain realizations, we need to offer a mandala every day. And I'd like to encourage us to do that using the traditional mandala kit. So you say, well, if everything's imagined, why do you need a kit? So I'll leave you, that, I'll leave you with that question to answer for yourself. But we do, it helps, it helps. Within this tradition, Geshe-la has kindly reduced the physical, holy things that we need to a minimum. But we do need some physical objects that help our mind turn to the holy. Our mala, for example. If we have a mala, prayer beads, that we use every day. And when we hold those prayer beads, we feel our Guru's blessings and our mind turns towards spiritual paths. We need things that will help us, for example, when we're dying, when we're sick. And if we've been using our mala, even if we're close to death and someone places our mala in our hand, just touching that mala will help our mind be faithful. So we can train now saying mantras as we go to sleep, having our mala close by. The same is true with, for example, making a mandala offering every day. Geshe-la wouldn't recommend that we do that physically with the rice and the mandala kit if there wasn't benefit to doing that. And if you get a chance to engage in a guru yoga and mandala offering retreat, which happens at all our dharma centers, and you get to throw rice all over the gompa <laughs> for a weekend or a week, and you're visualizing Precious Guru Tsongkhapa in front. You know, Jay Tsongkhapa made millions of mandala offerings till, till his wrists bled. He was already enlightened. So why did he do that? To show his disciples the importance of that faithful mind so when you've um, combined your faith with your wisdom of imagination, offering to your guru world peace, because that's what we're sort of offering, aren't we? When we offer a pure land where all beings have accomplished complete purity, we're imagining permanent world peace. So we're a little bit... Uh, in tune with our Guru's vision. And we're offering that imagined world. And the interesting thing, and if we get a chance, we'll think about this a little more later on. Is that it's... Um, a quality of our mind that things that are imagined through the power of familiarity and other causes and conditions what is imagined by our mind becomes what we perceive directly or our reality so as we offer a mandala every day 
or maybe more than once a day, as often as you are able, we create the causes for a pure land to appear because we're familiarizing our mind with that pure world, wanting it for others 